a big factor in becoming a 180 shooter, if you're not Steph Curry, uh, is shot selection. Uh, and so oftentimes as I'm watching games, uh, you know, I will see players take bad shots. It's one of the reasons why I struggle to watch college basketball now, because there are just a number of what I would consider really bad shots. Uh, and uh, the problem that I see when I attend practices and or sit close enough to the bench, uh, you know, during a game is a player will take what I would call a bad shot and players on the bench um, and even occasionally a coach will be yelling, you know, good shot, good shot, good shot. Um, and if you're a, a coach um, and you want to encourage a player to shoot, by all means, great. Um, I'd much prefer that behavior than, you know, immediately taking a player out of the game for taking that shot or screaming at them or something like that. Um, you know, generally speaking, uh, you know, within the course of a game, you know, I'm, I'm really not going to question a player's uh, shot selection. I'm not going to yell at them, hey, that's a bad shot, you know, something like that. Maybe when I take them out, you know, I might say, hey, you know, let's look for a better one. You know, we had a lot of time on the shot clock, whatever, we can get a better shot than that. You know, but I'm not going to yell and scream. I'm not going to take him out for that shot. Uh, you know, but on the other hand, uh, especially in the practice situations, um, this constant clapping and encouraging for terrible shots uh, misses the point a lot. Because uh, to me, it shows that players aren't aware what is and is not a good shot. Uh, if if a player takes an off balance, uh, you know, one dribble pull up from you know, 20 feet, foot on the line, three-pointer, and players on the bench or on the side are going, good shot, good shot. Uh, you know, we don't understand what a good shot is. Um, that's not a good shot. Um, even if it goes in, it's not a good shot. Um, and it's not a good shot really for anybody. Um, you know, if you're on balance, if you're in your range, and if you're open, okay, well, be smart. And if you're at 20 feet, you know, take half a step back to make sure you're behind the three-point line. Okay, so at the college level, right? High school level, you're at 20 feet, you're behind the three-point line, great. Um, but, you know, to me, not having that awareness makes that a questionable shot. Uh, you know, if you're on balance in range, maybe, you know, later in the shot clock, you know, I'm not going to be concerned whether you're looking down, you know, it's an okay shot at that point. Um, but you should have the awareness to stay behind the line so that when you step into your shot or jump into your shot, whatever you do as your uh, shooting footwork, that you stay behind the line. Um, and if you're shooting that off the dribble, then it, to me that's just a bad shot. I mean, uh, taking a 19-foot pull jump shot off the dribble um, is not a good shot. Um, you know, I just there aren't very many players who are going to shoot that shot. Um, at a 50 to 60 percent percentage to make it what I would consider a good shot. Now, through the course of the game, uh, we're probably not going to get a good shot every single possession. Um, ideally, that's what we want to do. We want to get good shots every single possession. If we're able to get good shots in every single possession, we'll probably be competitive. Um, but, you know, there's probably going to be situations, especially in a game with a shot clock, uh, where the defense has a really good possession, you know, maybe we make a bad decision here or there, fumble a pass, something happens, uh, and then we end up having to take a questionable shot, you know, because we're playing against the shot clock. It happens. In every game, you know, bad shots are taken. Um, but it's when bad shots are called good shots, um, that's when we develop problems. Um, and so through the course of a game, you know, we're probably going to have to take a pull-up jump shot. Um, even though analytics will tell us it's a bad shot, even though, you know, with the exception of probably a few players on my team, I don't want that shot taken, um, we're still going to have to shoot some pull-up jump shots um, unless we're playing against a bad defensive team. But a good defensive team, you're going to have to take those shots. You're going to have to make a couple tough shots uh, to win a game. Um, but there's a difference between, uh, you know, taking those shots as a consequence of a possession against a shot clock against a defense um, who's taking you away out of what you really want to do um, versus actually seeking those shots or shooting those shots early in the shot clock. So one of my big pet peeves is if we're on a two-on-one fast break and we take a pull-up jump shot from the elbow. Um, to me, that's a terrible shot. Two-on-one, we should get a layup. Um, and oftentimes, I will see players come down and pull up and they shoot their nice pull-up jump shot, two-on-one fast break in practice, and the coach is in there, good shot, good job. And to me, uh, it's, it's not a good shot. 
Um, and I don't want players to think that's a good shot in that situation. If that was six seconds left on the shot clock and we can get that shot, great. Um, but on a two-on-one fast break, I want a better shot. Um, and that's, that's a difference when we talk about what is and isn't a good shot. Um, we have to account for time and score. So when you're working out on your own uh, in the gym by yourself, you know, on balance, in rhythm, you know, 75% speed, sure, you make a decent percentage, okay? But in our team game against an opponent with a shot clock, with a score, is that still a good shot? Uh, early in the shot clock, I would say no. I don't want one pass, one dribble shot, you know, shot off the dribble, uh, you know, because I think we can get a better shot. If we make one pass and we're standing still, catching, shooting a, a wide open three pointer with a good three point shooter in rhythm, I'm okay with that shot. Um, it's a higher efficiency shot. We have our feet set, um, you know, catch and shoot. We're going to shoot a better percentage than off the dribble typically. Um, so a lot of things go into that. Um, you know, end of the shot clock, you know, we're probably going to have to settle for a worse shot if we get to that point. Um, so all these things are taken into consideration. Um, but I think when we, when we spend our time clapping and good shot, good shot, you know, again, I, I do understand there's sometimes, especially at lower levels, positive encouragement, trying to build confidence in a player. There are definitely reasons uh, to clap, to encourage players. Um, with my team right now, I do it all the time. Even, you know, we throw up terrible shots and I'm encouraging them because I want players to have confidence shooting the ball. Um, but that's a different situation than being in a tight college game, you know, with good players, um, you know, and we're still, you know, clapping and congratulating players for taking bad shots. Um, so I think more needs to be done when we're discussing what types of shots that we want um, and defining what types of shots that we want, because I do see a lot of coaches who immediately yank players out for missing shots. Uh, and if it's a good shot, I don't understand why we're taking a player out for missing a good shot. I don't think that player intentionally missed a good shot. Now, if the player's taking bad shots, you know, that's a coaching question, whether you want to live with those bad shots, whether you want to take them out, how you're going to, to handle a player who, you know, takes bad shots. You know, like I said, I, I typically won't punish a player, you know, if it's a one-time thing, you know, it's something that when I eventually take them out, we'll talk about it and figure it out and hope to do better next time. Um, but at higher levels of competition, you know, so be it. Um, but if we're taking players out for taking good shots, um, but then allowing players to take bad shots on occasion because for some reason we think that shooting closer to the basket, even if it's contested and off balance, is a better shot than shooting a wide open three-pointer, then I think we're misunderstanding shot selection and what offensive efficiency is and how uh, we get to be a good efficient offense. Um, so uh, shot selection is something that I spend time, you know, teaching during practice, playing games where we give, uh, you know, we rate shots, we give, uh, instead of scoring shots, you know, two points or three points or one point for a free throw, we'll give, you know, three points for a good shot, two points for a questionable shot, and one point for a bad shot, if you make that shot. So we're teaching what we want. We want good shots, so those are the shots that get the most points when they're made. Um, questionable shots get fewer points. Bad shots, even if you make it, you get minimal points um, because we want to teach shot selection. Um, and, and rather than just speaking about it and listing what's a good shot, um, I want players to internalize it. And the more that we can you know, play with it during games and really understand what a good shot is during practice and scrimmages and so forth, um, the more that we can internalize it so that in games we know what are the shots that we want, what are we trying to get initially, um, and then what are we willing to shoot late in a shot clock or – you know, if the defense is playing good defense, where are we going to look for, you know, kind of our secondary or tertiary shots? Um, but I think if we're trying to improve shooting percentages, it's not just about improving shooting technique. It's also about improving shot selection.